everybody! Welcome back to Living Traditions Homestead. My name is Sarah. Well, today is very exciting for me because I am bringing to you guys a new teaching series. A teaching series on how to raise meat rabbits. About four and a half years ago already, I did a teaching series on how to raise meat rabbits. And since then, there have been lots of questions. I've had an opportunity to kind of hear what people's concerns are and to gather my thoughts a little bit more thoroughly. I've also learned a ton in the last four and a half years, and I think it is worthy information to share with you guys. So today starts the teaching series about meat rabbits. I have lots of topics to discuss with you, lots of information to share with you, and today is the beginning. Now, this series and this video would be very boring if you just stared at me the entire time, so I decided to bring out one of our rabbits. This is our buck, New Zealand rabbit, and he is out here enjoying the sunshine, enjoying some fresh veggies that I picked from the greenhouse and he is just having a great time. So he will be assisting me with our video today. This little cage that he's in here by me, it's just a travel cage. He doesn't live in here, he lives by the does in our rabbit tree. Uh, this is just a little cage that we use for transportation when we're taking rabbits places or if we're going to pick some up. Kevin and I have been raising rabbits for meat for going on 10 years, and it all started when we decided we wanted to take more control over the food that we eat. Originally, that started out with just gardening and growing some of our own veggies, but when we started looking at all of the food that we consume, uh, we realized that meat is actually the most expensive thing that we were buying at the grocery store and we wanted to take control over that cost and we wanted to take control over the quality of the meat that we were eating and providing to our family. So rabbits were the very first meat animal that we ever started growing on the homestead. Now, when we got into rabbits first, we weren't even in an urban homestead. We were just in a normal, everyday um, residential neighborhood. We actually had a homeowners association and we had a very, very tiny backyard. So we started out before we had any land or any homestead or anything. And we were so excited and we definitely made it work. Rabbits were easy for us in that environment because they were small. They were quiet. They weren't very messy or stinky, and we could kind of get around our homeowners association rules because rabbits are generally considered pets rather than livestock, and there weren't a lot of rules prohibiting rabbits from being raised in your backyard. At that time, we also dabbled a little bit in quail because we could get around the HOA rules for quail as well. Now, soon after we got into rabbits, we did buy an urban homestead, but we still didn't have a lot of land. We only had about an acre, uh, maybe an acre and a quarter, and that's when we really expanded our rabbitry for our family. After rabbits, it gave us the confidence to move into other things that were easy enough for us to raise in a smaller homestead environment or on a small piece of land. In that acre and a quarter, we also raised meat chicken chickens, meat ducks, a couple pigs, meat goats, and we really had a good time and learned a lot in that environment. Rabbits are actually a really great multi-purpose animal on the homestead. They're not just great for meat, but they're fabulous for manure, especially if you're growing a ton in your gardens like we are. Rabbit manure is not considered hot, which means it doesn't need to be composted before you use it in the garden. As long as it's dry and is not full of urine, you can use it right away in your garden. We grow the most amazing tomatoes and the most amazing peppers, really, all of our stuff is amazing, but our secret is that we put rabbit manure in the planting hole of all of our plants. You guys may have seen some of our garden results, fantastic tomatoes and peppers, lots of great veggies, and we really do attribute that to rabbit manure. Another way that rabbits can be considered multi-purpose is from their fur. A lot of people like to harvest the pelts of rabbits to make different, you know, crafts or 
clothing, hats, gloves, those kinds of things. There's one breed of rabbit that we recommend as both meat and fur breed of rabbit. And we'll get to that in a little bit, but rabbits really are a multi-purpose type of animal for the homestead. Rabbit meat itself is a very lean, white type of meat. There's very little fat, especially at the age that you're processing meat rabbits, which is about 10 to 12 weeks. In general, rabbit meat tastes like chicken, and most domestic rabbits like this that are also processed at a young age, like 10 to 12 weeks, in my experience, don't have a gamey flavor at all. Wild rabbits might, but the domestic rabbits generally don't. Rabbit meat can be used as a substitute for chicken in almost every single chicken recipe. So if you like something made with chicken, I almost guarantee that you'll like it made with rabbit. Now, some will argue that rabbit meat is so lean that it's not a healthy, sustainable kind of meat to eat. And while it is true that rabbit meat is very lean and humans need some kind of fat, rabbit is just an amazing addition to all the other types of meat that you can raise on your homestead and that you can eat. We all need healthy fats in our lives. Rabbit meat doesn't have very much, so if you're going to eat primarily rabbit meat in your diet, you'll need to substitute a healthy fat alongside that. Most of the rabbit breeds that are used for meat, and even in the rabbit meat industry, uh, you'll find that they use white rabbits. And in the chicken industry, they usually use white chickens. In the turkey industry, they usually use white turkeys. And that's because white fur and white feathers don't show on like the carcass if there's a little bit left behind here and there. A lot of people wonder why is it that mainly white animals are used, well, rabbits, chickens, turkeys, in the meat industry, and really that's why. One piece of black hair or fur on a rabbit carcass is gonna be a lot more noticeable on your dinner table than a piece of white fur. Same goes with feathers on a chicken and a turkey. So because of that, that's why a lot of people raise white rabbits for meat. We have eaten so much rabbit meat over the years, made so many recipes that we actually created a rabbit cookbook. Um, it's on our Etsy shop. It's a PDF file. If you're interested in like, what the heck are you gonna make with rabbit meat? Check that out. I know you'll enjoy it. Lots of people have. One of the best things about raising rabbits is that you don't need a lot of space for them. They don't require a lot of space and you don't need a giant yard or a huge homestead to raise rabbits. It's a very good thing to start with if you're wanting to get into raising your own meat and having more control over the food that you eat and the food you provide your family. Rabbits are also very inexpensive to raise. Uh, there is some startup cost with rabbits. You'll need one cage for each rabbit that you have, a feeder, uh, a waterer, and a, one nesting box per doe that you have, but that's really it. Once you have those and you buy the rabbits, really the only expense after that is the cost of feeding them, and rabbits really don't eat very much. They really only eat about a half of a cup to a cup of feed per day. Now that's on average. You know, the babies aren't going to really eat any at first, but the mamas, when they're feeding a whole litter of rabbits, they're going to eat a bunch. So it's an average of a half a cup to a cup of feed a day per rabbit. That's really not that much, and it doesn't add up to a whole lot of cost. Another nice thing about rabbits is that you can supplement the feed that you're giving them with hay or things that you grow for them or things that you can forage for them. So you can cut down on the cost of feeding them by providing them with alternatives. Now, I will be talking in a later video about whether or not you can completely replace rabbit feed or the pellets. We'll wait and get to that and discuss that at another time. Okay, so let's talk about the breeds of meat rabbits. Now there are actually, there are lots of breeds of meat rabbits. I'm not gonna list every single one of them and I'm not gonna tell you if one is bad versus one that's good. I'm just gonna tell you the breeds that we have raised and we've really enjoyed all of them. 
Right now we are raising New Zealand rabbits. That's what our buck is, and that's actually what all of our does are right now. Uh, New Zealand rabbits are all white. They all have red eyes. There are different colors of New Zealands, but like I said before, it's most common for meat rabbits to be white. So it's most common to get white New Zealand meat rabbits. New Zealands are a large breed of rabbit and they grow very quickly. That's why a lot of people will get the New Zealands. That's why we have them. Another breed is called Californian meat rabbits. They are all white except they have black noses and black ears. They're a little bit on the smaller side, but they grow quickly as well. And they have a really nice meat to bone ratio. So more meat, less bone, the bones are smaller, you know, more delicate. And so you just kind of get more bang for your buck in the Californians. We love Californians too. And we actually really like the cross between the New Zealand and the Californian. They make a really good meat rabbit. So consider crosses as well. Now the third breed that we have raised in the past and we did also really enjoy are silver fox. Silver fox meat rabbits are considered kind of a heritage breed. Silver fox rabbits are actually gaining in popularity for homestead meat rabbits. Uh, there aren't many people that are raising them or breeding them and so they're actually pretty sought after right now. The reason why they are a great rabbit to consider for your homestead is not only are they a great meat rabbit and they'll produce manure for you, but they have fantastic fur. It's so gorgeous beautiful pelts. The one thing to consider though about raising rabbits for their pelts is that if you're also raising them for meat, like the timing doesn't quite work out. Generally, you'll process meat rabbits for their meat at about 10 to 12 weeks. So at the oldest, about three months old. But in order to have a nice pelt, you should wait until the rabbits are about six months old. But those three breeds we have raised We've enjoyed them, and really we recommend all three. Over the years, I've gotten lots of questions about where do you find these meat rabbits to breed? Where do you find your breeders? There are lots of places to look, and sometimes it can be kind of challenging to find meat rabbits. There are lots of different places. You can look specifically for breeders out there of particular breeds, like New Zealand breeders, Californian breeders, silver fox, that are kind of registered through their registry and through their associations. That is great. If you want pedigreed meat rabbits, go right ahead. Contact those breeders through their association pages. Generally, they'll have listings of the breeders. They will be a lot more expensive, but you'll know for sure that you're getting good breeding stock that are purebred whatever breed you're looking for. With what we wanted to do, we just wanted to raise meat rabbits for our family. We didn't want to show them. We didn't care if they were pedigreed. So we started looking in other areas that we knew might not have perfect lineage or pedigreed animals, uh, but it was okay for us. If you're in that same situation or mindset, I suggest looking on Craigslist Generally, there are lots of ads, depending on your area, uh, on Craigslist. You can look in different Facebook groups online for raising meat rabbits. Another great option is the FFA programs at your local high school. A lot of times, they incorporate raising rabbits into their curriculum of some of their ag classes and ag programs. Similar to the FFA programs would be your local 4-H groups and Lastly, you could go to the county fair and talk to those people who are showing rabbits and they might be selling some of theirs or they might know somebody who's selling rabbits. So you found some rabbits that you want to buy. You're about to go pick them up and pay for them. What do you look for? How do you make sure that what you're bringing home is a quality rabbit? The most important things to look for are signs that they are healthy rabbits or signs of sickness. You need to be looking out for those. So look at their eyes and make sure that they're clear and that, that they're not crusty at all around them. Look at their nose. Make sure that they're not snotty and don't have crusty mucus on them or like green or yellow yucky stuff. Pay attention to make sure they're not sneezing a lot or rubbing their noses to clear them off a lot. Look at their teeth. 
Sometimes rabbits can have problems with their teeth where they get twisted, that they're not straight up and down. And I actually mistakenly bought a rabbit one time whose front teeth were broken off. I had no idea that that was the case or that it could even happen. Now, they did end up growing back because rabbit's teeth continue to grow, but that's definitely something to look at. Now, rabbit's teeth should have two on the top and two on the bottom, and they should align very nicely together. If you have the opportunity to look at their teeth to see if they line up like that, go ahead. It's a good thing to look at. Now look inside their ears and make sure they're clean inside of there. If they're full of gooky stuff or scabs, you might not wanna buy that rabbit. Generally, that is considered ear mites inside of there. And while it is treatable, you don't know how far along that is and that can really damage their ear inside of there and cause problems. Now we're getting into some of the things that might be a little bit embarrassing to look at. You want to look at their butts if you can. You want to see if there is sign of diarrhea, if there's any urine that's caked up on the fur. You wanna look at the male genitals if you can. If they're old enough, you should be able to see the male genitals pretty plainly, uh, but make sure they aren't crusty or have scabs on them. You just wanna make sure everything looks healthy. Rabbits also, especially if they're in cages that are up off the ground, sometimes they can get sores on their feet if their owners haven't given them some way for them to get off of the wire, like on a board or on a piece of tile or something. And sometimes they can get sores on their feet called sore hocks. And while that is treatable, you just wanna know ahead of time and talk with the owner about that. They also can get sores from urine buildup in their cage from having to stand on that. So you wanna look at the color of their fur on the backs of their feet to make sure that they're not super stained yellow and any sign of burns. Take note of their overall behavior. Um, do they seem totally stressed out? Are they just running in circles around their cage? Are they grunting? Are they kind of lunging at the person's hands? Those are all behavior problems that you don't want to bring to your homestead. You want one that is okay with being picked up either by the back of the neck or uh, under their chest. You just want a rabbit with nice disposition, especially if you're just starting out. You'll want the owner to show you that the rabbit or rabbits are the sex that you expect them to be or that you think you're buying. And in a video coming up, I will show you how to sex rabbits. And so when you go there, you know the difference between a boy and a girl, but you'll want them to show you that. If they are not willing to, or they don't know how, maybe you guys can work together, or if you're experienced enough, go ahead and check that. There are some things that you'll want to ask the owner that you're buying the rabbits from. Ask what type of feed they're on. Specifically, what percent protein is being fed to them in their feed. But also, have they had any hay? What kind of hay? Have they ever had any fresh feed like spinach, fresh grass, lettuce? What types of things have they been eating? Just so that you know when you get home if they've had that before or not. If you're buying does, ask if they've been bred or is there a possibility that they could be bred? And if so, how long ago? When were they bred? So that you know when to put in a nesting box or when to expect them to have a litter. And the last thing that I can think of for you to ask when you're buying rabbits is just double check how old they are. How old are they? When were they born? Do they have the date or a general timeline? That is important information so that you can determine when they can start breeding or if they can start breeding right away. Wow, that was a ton of information in a short amount of time. I think we need to take a break and you guys need time to digest that information. If you have questions, make sure you put them in the comment section below so I can start developing basically my lesson plans for future topics and subject matters. You guys, I'm just so excited to do this teaching series with you guys. It's been a long time since I've been able to just kind of spill my guts of all the things that I've learned over the years. I really do enjoy these kinds of videos with you and I enjoy teaching 
the things that I have learned. Hey, if you know somebody who's been thinking about getting into raising rabbits for meat, or you know somebody who you think would really benefit from raising rabbits for meat, make sure you share this video series with them. Lots more information to come. I'd also really like for you to share it on your social media so more people can get into taking more control over the food that they eat and provide to their family. Hey, if you're not subscribed yet, the best way to get notified of these videos coming out is to press the subscribe button below. I'd love that. And until next time, thank you so much for stopping by our homestead. Take care and God bless.